Hello, this is uh, Larry Pond, and today we're going to talk about the new rules for tax credits for electric vehicles under the Inflation Reduction Act. So let's get started here. First of all, a little bit about me. I'm Larry Pond. I'm a CPA, a PFS, CFP, and an EA here in River Shores, California. I've been doing this for 36 years, and I really enjoy talking about taxes. So let's get started with today's program. <clears throat> so the Inflation Reduction Act, also known as IRA, was signed by President Biden August 16th, 2022. And that's a very important date because that's the effective date of this new law. It was passed by the Senate, 51 to 50, and the House of Representatives, 220 to 207. Over 700 pages, and this bill has tax increases, increases to IRS funding, energy and climate change provisions, and Medicare changes. Today, we're going to talk about the electric vehicle component of this tax law change. So the credit is now called the clean vehicle credit. So it's previously called the Qualified Plug-in Electric Drive Motor Credit. And under the previous law, the maximum was $7,500 per vehicle. However, under the old law, there was a 200,000 vehicle cap per manufacturer. So once you sold more than 200,000 cars, there were no more credits available on the cars. And those included uh, Tesla, General Motors, and Toyota. And I think some other manufacturers were getting up there. So the president signed the law on August 16th of 2022. So the new rules apply August 16th of 2022. So what the new law has done is it renewed the credit starting in January of 2023, and will last until the end of 2032. So starting in 2023, this 200,000 vehicle cap is eliminated, so it doesn't matter. The other big change in the law is that you don't have to wait till you file the tax return to get the credit. So starting in 2025, you can get the credit at the time you purchased the vehicle. However, you can do that, get the $7,500 credit at the time you buy the car, so that reduces the price of the car. What if you end up not qualifying for various reasons? We'll talk about those reasons. Well, you'll have to pay that back on the tax return. So there is some risk by taking the credit up front. So here's the new requirements to get the full credit. <clears throat> First of all, the vehicle must be assembled in North America. And then the materials and critical materials in the battery must come from the U.S. or a country with a free trade agreement with the U.S. Now, these mineral and material guidelines, they go into effect in 2024. So that gives our manufacturers some time to get caught up with that. So uh, at that time, 40% of the battery minerals must be mined and processed in the U.S. or partner countries. And then that gets increased to 80% after 2026. So currently, only 15% of the minerals are extracted or processed in the U.S. So we have a ways to go there. Now, there are other restrictions to get the full credit, too. So there's an MSRP restriction. So for cars, that's a $55,000 MSRP or less. For SUVs and trucks, uh, that's an $80,000 MSRP. So it depends on the type of vehicle you're buying. And, um, and it's MSRP. It's not what you actually pay for the car because uh, MSRP is a certain number, but you might end up buying some extras or certain different trims or accessories and those kinds of things that could uh, get the MSRP up. There's also modified adjusted gross income limitations. There's income limitations. And it's for either your current year income or your prior year income. So if you're single, your income's got to be less than $150,000. Head of household, $225,000. Bird flying joint, $300,000. So if you're going to be close to these limits, 
You might do some tax planning to get you down there to qualify. So if your previous year income is below that amount already, there's nothing you need to do, you're already there. But if your previous year income is higher than these amounts, then you won't be eligible for the credit, then you might wanna do some planning this year to see if you can get your income below there, if that's a consideration. So this new law replaces the old law for cars purchased after August 16th of 2022. So if you bought a car uh, before August 16th of 2022, then the old law applies. And then there's something called a binding contract. So because of the supply chain issues, you might've bought the car months ago, but you don't have it yet. So if you have a binding contract before August 16, 2022, you might not have paid for it yet, but you put the order for the car, you purchased the car, you might not have paid for it because you're waiting for it. And that's been a common situation. Then the old law applies. Well, with the old law, uh, the 200,000 vehicle limit still applies. So if the manufacturer you're buying the car from has not exceeded the limit, you might still get the credit. There's no MSRP limit and there's no AGI limit. So those are for cars purchased before August 16th of 2022. After August 16th of 2022, the new law applies, and but, but um, all the other limitations aren't there yet. So a lot of the limitations kick in in 2023. So uh, you need to take a look at how that's going to work out for you. Now, if your vehicle is a plug-in hybrid, which means it's an electric and a gas car, well, the battery has to have, the battery capacity has to be more than seven kilowatt hours. So the manufacturer will, will let you know, or you can look at the specs of the car to see if the battery qualifies. Under the old law, it was five kilowatt hours. And you'll find this on form 8936, qualified plug-in electric drive motor. So I do know something about this because I personally have a Toyota Prius Prime. Toyota Prius Prime is a gas hybrid car. And because of the size of its battery, it qualified for the credit. So we did get a tax credit on that vehicle. So there's going to be all kinds of questions about, does my car qualify? Where's my car made? So the Department of Energy has this information on the website. So you go to the Department of Energy website under the Alternative Fuels Data Center. <clears throat> you go to their website, and here's the link to it. Uh, it. It gives a chart of electric vehicles assembled in North America. It gives a chart, and the chart also shows which manufacturers have exceeded the 200,000 vehicle limit, and that's for 2022. And if you want to know specifically where your car has been uh, assembled, there's a VIM locator. That's on the Department of Transportation website, and we got the link here. It's, uh, they call it the VIM decoder. You input the VIN, you input the model year, and it'll tell you where the car was assembled because it's hard to know sometimes because... Um, for example, Teslas, where are they assembled? It could, it could be assembled uh, here in Fremont, California, or another plant in the U.S., or Germany, or China. So who knows where that car came from? So the VIN locator is going to help you with that. The IRS has a really good uh, FAQ webpage. Uh, to look it up, just go to irs.gov. In the search box, type in uh, IRC 30D. That's section 30D. That's the clean vehicle credit code section. And it's got a lot of information about plug-in electric vehicles. It uh, gives you a list of cars that are qualified, don't qualify. And it has links to the Department of Energy, links to the Department of Transportation. So it's not just for buying uh, new cars, but what's also new starting in 2023 is used electric vehicles. Yeah, you get a credit for a used electric car. <clears throat> the credit is a lesser of $4,000 <clears> or 30% of the sale price of the vehicle. Now, the <clears throat> maximum price of the vehicle is $25,000. So it's going to be 25,000 or less. The car has to be at least two years old. Must have a model year at least two years earlier than the credit claim. And it must meet the clean vehicle credit rule or be a clean uh, cell fuel vehicle with a gross weight rating of less than 14,000 pounds. <clears throat> now, there's also adjusted gross income limits here. Either a single, 75,000 or less, head of household, 112,500 or less, 
If you're married, 150,000 or less. Now, only, uh, only an individual qualified for this credit, it's not for a business, only individuals. Now, it's not eligible if you can be claimed as a dependent and not be claimed as a dependent within the last three years. And you know why they put that rule in, right? Because um, you, you might uh, decide to get a used electric car for your son or daughter. Well, if they were dependent within the last three years, they're not going to be eligible for this credit. You know, it's pretty clever, right? They might even meet the AGI limitations and all that. But you got to watch out there, claim as dependent or not. Now, with electric, used electric vehicles, final assembly does not have to be in the U.S. That's not a requirement. You can qualify for the credit once every three years, every three years. So you can't get this credit every year, but every three years. And starting in 2024, starting in 2024, you could get the credit up front at a dealership. And these are going to be qualified dealerships that are selling used electric cars. They're going to certify that it's more than two years old. And they're going to certify it meets all the requirements. Just like getting a new car, you can get the credit up front at the dealership, which means it lowers the purchase price of the car. So again, the risk you take by taking advantage of the upfront credit is that what if you don't qualify? You got a big bonus or, or your income went up because of a sale of an asset or something like that. Then, then you'd be knocked out of eligibility for the credit, which means you have to pay it back on your tax return. So that's a risk you take and that's something you need to evaluate uh, with this. Now there's also the qualified refueling property credit. So um, the original credit expired at the end of 2021. Now it's been reinstated for 2022 and it's extended through 2032. It's for electric car charging stations. You can get those installed at your home, get a credit for that. Also, if you decide to get a natural gas outlet, we have a natural gas car too. So it's, it's a refueling credit. It's not just for electricity. For individuals, that's a 30% credit. They're not, I don't think they're that expensive. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, but for businesses, it's a 6% credit. And this makes sense for um, if you have an apartment complex, if you own a, a little shopping center or, or some kind of property where you could designate a couple of parking spaces at minimum to a car charging station. Because I think you know, to electrify our cars, we're going to need more and more of these charging stations. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've been in many locations where there is no charging station. There is no charging station or the closest one is a mile away. And that doesn't make sense for me to park my car and walk a mile. So, uh, so hopefully this will encourage uh, more people to do it. And, and I, with some clients, I've been uh, running some numbers for them to see if it makes sense to do this. You get a tax credit and you make money. Uh, and, and you get to set the price. You get to set the price. There's currently no regulations of how much you can charge. You can charge by the hour if you want to. I know some charging stations just charge by the hour. They say the electricity is free, but it's $2 an hour, which, which of course comes up to be more than what the cost of electricity is. And in a lot of locations, like at public libraries, I know this, they just charge for the cost of electricity, and that could be a pretty good deal. So um, you might want to take a look at that. So for a business, the maximum amount for a business is $100,000. It was $30,000. So that could be quite lucrative. Now, that's only if you buy the charging station to put in the car. And that's a question to ask, because I looked at that also. Do we want to buy the charging station, or do we want to lease it? And from a, from a cash flow standpoint, leasing is a pretty good deal. What's the advantage of leasing? You don't own the charging station. So what's the downside of that? You don't get the tax credit. However, as technology improves or um, you know, I've seen people run into these things and damage it and all that, the, the, the leasing company or the provider is responsible for maintenance of the charging station or as they... Uh, introduce new models. You know, technology is always improving. You're making better models. Uh, so that's the advantage of leasing. The advantage of buying, you get the tax credit. The downside is, yes, you own it. Hey, uh, you get the credit. You also get a claim it on your tax return for depreciation too. So you get that write-off for doing that if you're a business. So if you have an apartment building, a shopping center, or something like that, property that you own. But 
Take a look at Form 8911, Alternative Fuel Vehicle Refueling Property Credit. Take a look at that and its instructions. So I hope this was helpful to you. And yeah, before you run out and buy the electric vehicle, do some research. I have to admit to you, the uh, dealership might not, might not be the best source of information, but take a look at the uh, IRS website. They have a lot of good information about it. Take a look at the Department of Energy and Department of Transportation. So, so these articles are very helpful, very detailed on whether the car you're buying is going to qualify for that and see if it makes sense from a cost standpoint and, and if it fits the needs of your family. It depends on your driving situation. Some, for some families, it might not make sense to get an electric car because uh, uh, the battery only has a certain amount of, um, a certain amount of um, mileage on it. And if you drive more than that, you have to remember you got to charge the car again. So thank you for your time today. I hope you find this helpful. If there are other topics you like to see covered, let me know. I really enjoy doing this and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.